Paint a picture of the extent of the, 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 the inversion that we're seeing across various uh, various durations on the Treasury curve because, you know, we're focused this morning, some of the, the stories we've been doing focus on 230s, but you can look at all kinds of other durations. I mean, that two-year yield just keeps on moving higher. Absolutely, absolutely. And, you know, it's all, always pricing in a more aggressive Fed. Higher for longer is that mantra. We're looking for at least 75 basis points of hikes now next week. That's what's priced in. That's what the market's expecting. So it lifts those shorter term uh, interest rates ever higher and tips the, the, the yield curve around. What it also tells you is that longer term expectations for yields for inflation are still pretty benign. You know, on that longer outlook is that we're looking for quite low yields relative to where we are even today. Uh, um, which is not that high in the whole sweep of history either. You know, I think we, we put a lot of attention on um, the, the yield curve inversion because obviously that is uh, historically a harbinger for, for a recession. But what you really want to look for is when we re invert and when when the when the uh, longer term rates come back above the short term rates that's the time when you're really worried that we're heading into a downturn usually. So um, keep an eye on when we start heading in the other direction, Anna. Mm. Yeah, it's always a confusing one, isn't it? Sort of the inversion is worrying because it might not be inverted uh, shortly. But let me ask you about where this leaves us on Fed pricing. After that data on Tuesday, the markets quickly rethought just how much hiking we were going to get over what kind of time period and what kind of stock sell-off that might then result in. Where have we got to on expectations for September's meeting? Yeah, so September, at least 75, um, vague outside chance of 100 um, as a possibility, at least. You know, the fact that people are talking about it sometimes can, can, can make it a reality, can open the door for the Fed to do it if it feels the need. You know, there, some of the narrative is that this would be seen as a panic move. This would be seen as too much and too unsettling, you know, breaking the mold. But on the other hand, if the Fed really wants to show it's in control, you know, to get a grip and maybe actually give people that confidence that it really is doing everything it can to get inflation back, then perhaps that, that, that higher hike is the way to do it and to give the markets a, a more friendly kind of uh, time going forwards from here. You know, get it, get it all done, get it out of the way, that kind of mentality. I think, you know, you mentioned uh, Ray Dalio talking, though, about, you know, how uh, Fed hikes are going to continue and how bad that's going to be for the stock market, looking for another 20% decline in equities if the Fed keeps on going with these hikes. You know, so that's the, the worry for investors is that, too, well, not too much hiking, too much hiking, you know, if you're thinking about economic economic growth, enough hiking to get inflation under control, but maybe that hurts growth and maybe that's not good for markets. Fed probably doesn't care. Fed just wants to get inflation under control. And that's the dilemma for investors at the moment. Where are we on strong dollar then, Paul? We seem to be, you know, we're back to the strong dollar vibes this morning. Took a slight break from that yesterday. Not far from record yeah. highs for the US dollar. And we know that we've seen the Japanese voices getting louder, that chorus suggesting that there could be intervention mm -hmm. in the future. Definitely. So uh, hand in hand with the higher U.S. yields in the short term is that stronger dollar just carries on going, you know, ever, ever more pressure. And no real surprise, you know, if you look at the Bloomberg Opinion column by Marcus Ashworth today talking about how really, you know, that's the only place where you want to keep your cash at the moment in the U.S. because of those higher interest rates. It's safer. Why would U.S. investors put their money elsewhere? Has, over here is a big story because it's sucking cash out of our economies. It's pushing down those exchange rates to undesirable levels. It's making things very awkward for the likes, not just of the Bank of Japan, but for the Bank of Korea, uh, which was coughing ever louder about its own exchange rate today, and also for the Chinese, which are, are using their uh, fixing to signal their discontent with the weakness of the currency there as well. So plenty of pressure. Japan really one of the main focal points. It's got this other problem as well because they're trying to keep down interest rates there. They've got a yield curve mm. control. But while the US rates are going up, sucking up the Japanese rates as well. So they're fighting, you know, two different battles to try to try to keep everything under control at the moment. Very difficult uh, for that monetary policy setting. And part of the signs of the problems that the Fed hikes are causing all around the world.